Hi guys, Janice here, welcome back. Today marks the second reading with Janice, and I've got two books I'd like to share with everybody. The very first book, which I acquired a while ago, but I really hadn't had a chance to read, is called Peripheral, uh, Peripheral Vascular Diseases by Alan Barker Hines, or specifically Edgar V. Allen, Nelson W. Barker, and then Edgar A. Hines. This book was published circa 1995. A bit outdated, but very, very solid in terms of the amount of information it gives. Specifically, the chapter that deals with Raynaud's. Whenever I first started studying Raynaud's, I thought that there was a very big genetic component to it. That you had to be genetically predisposed to Raynaud's for it to really affect you. But I recently got a chance to interview a construction worker that had been in the field for quite some time. In this book, it talks about how vibration uh, can cause soft tissue damage related to Raynaud's. Things like the end of the fingers turning blue, purple, and eventually rotting in one case. And what was so nice in the case study that I got to deal with he had the very same problems. Whenever he was handling anything that caused a lot of vibration, whether it be uh, weed eaters in one case, drills, jackhammers, similar to the book, and then just machines in general that caused a lot of very high intensity vibration, his hands would hurt a lot. They would itch like crazy, similar to what you know, a typical person's reaction. But with repeated exposure, he started noticing that the ends of his fingers would turn blue, eventually purple, and in one case his pinky, very similar to the story in this book, uh, he actually started developing rotting. He actually lost uh, the nail and up to about here on his finger, well, well backwards. I found this fairly fascinating just because, one, his symptoms could be brought about by bone damage. Basically, the vibration would cause calcium shedding, which would cause the smooth muscles in the area to be activated via the Bayless effect uptake of calcium, but it also could be causing a unique form of nerve damage brought about by those vibrations. I'm not entirely certain quite yet, but I do believe that it holds a lot, a lot of answers that are going to be very, very helpful later on towards explaining a lot of various different ways we can start exercising smooth muscles and we can start making some serious progress in the field of well, cardiovascular health in general. The second book I'm using currently is called The Fundamentals of Rote Genealogy. Rote Genealogy. I think I'm saying that right. At least I hope I am. That one circa 1974, also a bit outdated, but very, very, very good pictures, really gets a chance to look at the bones more extensively and how they exist in relation to various tissues. So I've been trying to follow up on the idea that, that this non-genetic form of Raynaud's could be caused by calcium shedding in the bones and that there may be some relation to how effective certain forms of low frequency vibration, ultrasound, can be very effective for causing upregulation of things like FGF, VEGF, and other vascular related growth factors, which I actually uh, recently got a chance to read a bit on. But none of that is quite ready to be shared just yet, but in the video I'll be doing shortly, I am going to be talking a bit more at length about some ideas I have regarding the Bayless effect and how they may pertain to future discoveries as well as future methods which I'd like to try and implement. And, well guys, this is me letting you get a better idea of the stuff that's going on in my brain. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see everyone very soon.